In the study of public policy, it is useful to be able to categorize specific policies according to some general characteristics. Many classification schemes have been developed by policy analysts. Perhaps the most famous is the scheme developed by Theodore Lowy in the early 1970s. The utility of a classification scheme is the same in the study of public policy as it is in any other discipline, such as biology. If we are familiar with the general characteristics of a type of policy, we are in better position to make sense out of specific policies. Just as a biologist finds it useful, convenient, and instructive to group animal organisms into phyla, order, family, and species, a policy scientist finds it useful, convenient, and instructive to group policies by type. The policy classification scheme that we'll introduce shortly is relatively simple and remarkably consistent. The policy analyst must identify two pieces of information to classify policy under this scheme, the primary target group of the policy and the activity of government with respect to the primary target group. To put it a bit differently, the analyst must be able to answer two questions. One, who is the primary target group of the policy? And two, what is government doing to or for the primary target group? A target group is some segment of the general population that is affected by the policy. The primary target group is the segment of the population that is immediately or directly affected by the policy action. Frequently, it is very easy to identify the primary target group of a policy. In the Old Age Survivors and Disability Insurance Program, again, more popularly known as Social Security, the primary target group is indicated in the name of the program. It can be argued that the program actually has three identifiable primary target groups, the elderly, survivors, and the disabled. Motorists are the primary target group of a speed limit. Smokers are the primary target group in a prohibition against smoking in public places. In other policies, the primary target group may be more difficult to identify. In workplace safety and health regulation, who is the primary target group? One reasonable impulse leads us to conclude that workers are the primary target group. Another may lead us to say that employers are the primary target group. In this example, employers are the primary target group because that is the segment of the population that is directly affected by what government does, the imposition of regulatory standards. Workers are affected by the policy, although they are affected in a secondary way. Thus, use of the adjective primary suggests that there may be several segments of the general population that are affected in a secondary or even a tertiary way by the policy. By saying they are secondary or tertiary target groups, we do not mean to imply that they are less important. These are spillover target groups, and while it is important to understand the effects of policies on spillover target groups, they are not relevant to classifying policy under this scheme. Ultimately, the point is that when we ask the question who, who is the primary target group, it reminds us that people are always affected by public policies. Government makes public policy with respect to people, not animals or plants, air or water, animate or inanimate objects. Once we have answered the who question, we can then proceed to the what question. What is government doing to the primary target group? What is government doing for the primary target group? One of the features of this classification scheme that promotes consistency is the clear distinction between what government does, public policy actions on the one hand, versus the effects of what government does on the other hand. One criticism of Theodore Lowy's classification scheme is that it appears to focus on what government does in some classes and on the effects of what government does in others. This can be confusing, particularly for introductory students. The scheme introduced here focuses exclusively on what government does. This focus is consistent with our previous emphasis on the implementation component of public policy.